Coming up on Cronkite News, there is still confusion over abortion rights in Arizona, even after a court ruled in favor of a 1901 law. What activists say they'll do now. Plus, a new survey asked Arizona voters if they believe our elections are secure. Find out how most people responded. And kids as young as five could soon get a new COVID-19 booster. How it could protect them from multiple variants. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Sydney Witte. And I'm Atria Maneshni. Thank you for joining us. Abortion rights activists are evaluating their next steps after a court ruled that a 1901 law banning almost all abortions in the state can stand. Today, Planned Parenthood Arizona filed a court motion seeking an immediate stay of that ruling. Cronkite News health reporter Ryan Tismaneski has details on the latest moves mean for Arizona. A Pima County judge ruled late Friday that a near total ban on abortions in Arizona is back in effect. The law dates to before Arizona was even a state, and it means that abortion procedures have again come to a stop. There is no abortion service in Arizona. This law does not represent the state's interest in 2022. And so we, we are going to do whatever we can in order to get out the vote in November, and then also to look at um, enshrining abortion into our state constitution going forward to 2024. Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich praised the ruling, saying it provides, quote, clarity and uniformity on this important issue. But abortion right advocates are pushing back. Chris Mays is running to replace Burnovich. She tells Cronkite News that if elected, she'd work to restore access to abortions. When I am attorney general, I will never prosecute a doctor, a nurse, a midwife, a pharmacist or a woman for abortion or reproductive services, period. Abe Hamaday, the Republican nominee for attorney general, says he would interpret the law as written. The abortion ban provides an exception to save the life of the mother, but none in cases of rape or incest. In a statement, Brittany Fontenot, CEO of Planned Parenthood Arizona, said the ruling is not the end of the fight. In Phoenix, Ryan Tismaneski, Cronkite News. The court's decision means the 1901 abortion ban will supersede a law passed this year that would have banned abortion at 15 weeks. While it awaits a response from the court, Planned Parenthood has canceled all abortion appointments. A new survey of Arizona voters shows most believe in the safety and security of Arizona's election system. Connor McGill is at the Google touchscreen to tell us more about what the survey found. Conducted by the Center for the Future of Arizona, roughly 500 voters were surveyed on their thoughts on the safety and security of elections. 74% of all voters say they think Arizona elections are fair, and the breakdown is almost even among Republicans and independents with 65% of Republicans and 68% of independents and 89% of Democrats saying it's fair. Republicans, though, aren't as confident in the security of the elections, while 70% of all voters think the elections are secure. Only 54% of Republicans, 63% of independents, and 93% of Democrats agree. I spoke with the president of the Center for the Future of Arizona, who says the survey is a good reflection of Arizona voters. When we say that Arizonans believe that our elections are uh, fair, secure, and reliable, that we are really reaching out to all likely voters. Additionally, 80 percent of all voters say they were confident in the accuracy of the August primary election. And 70, 77 percent of all voters are confident that the November election will be accurate. You can view all the results at ArizonaFuture.org. At the Google touch screen, Connor McGill, Cronkite News. Financial experts have been warning for months we could see a global recession. And there's a new concern today after at least one major multinational company is halting production. FedEx says a weakened economy could cause a $500 million revenue loss this year. The shipping giant already closed some offices and grounded cargo planes after decreased demand for packages. Some FedEx workers are threatening to stop operating on Black Friday claiming the rising costs for fuel and labor make the company unprofitable. Experts say we'll find out soon exactly where the U.S. economy is heading, as earnings reports from major retailers and manufacturers are released in the coming weeks. Migrants and community supporters are protesting in Nogales, Mexico. Cronkite News reporter Valeria Rodriguez spoke with those involved to learn more about their concerns. 
as part of the World Day of Migrants and Refugees, advocates and Nogales community members come together for a call to action to help thousands of migrants stranded in Nogales. Heat, abuse, and lack of health care are just some things thousands of migrants face when making a trip to seek asylum, says migrant advocate at a protest in Nogales, Mexico. We suffer from inequality, discrimination, and unemployment. For over a year, Gonzalez has been waiting to hear an update on his status after leaving his home in Guerrero. I ask the community to be supportive. We can all go through some difficult situations while in this world. According to Customs and Border Patrol, there have been over 73,000 enforcement encounters at the southwest border. A lot of these families, you know, out of out of desperation, out of uh, having no other choices, they are forced to, they're left with no other option but to try to cross through more remote ports, through more uh, dangerous areas. Kino Migrant Initiative helps thousands of migrants waiting for an update on their cases. It is really important to awake in solidarity uh, for our brother and, and sisters that are a uh, migrating and and to understand that you know migration is not a problem that needs to be solved but there are, again are brothers and sisters that need and deserve to be welcomed uh, into our community the biden administration said title 42 to end in may but it remains in place under court order after the state attorney general blocked the termination in in the newsroom valer rodriguez concrete news during a meeting today, President Joe Biden proposed a new rule for the travel industry to be more upfront with ticket information. According to a draft release from the Department of Transportation, the rule would require travel sites and airlines to provide customers with information on how they are being charged for their tickets. The first time an airfare is displayed, the prices would have to include fees for baggage, cancellations and flight changes. The White House official says Biden wanted to stress the importance of travelers being able to see exactly how much their tickets will cost. Kids as young as five may have a new way to keep from getting COVID-19. Pfizer and BioNTech announced today requests for emergency use authorization for a new vaccine. The updated booster would be for five to 11 years old. Officials say this new shot would focus on new variants of COVID-19 as well as strains from the original virus. Pfizer already has an updated vaccine targeting the original strains and new variants, but that booster is only authorized for people older than 12. Moderna has also filed for authorization of an updated booster for children as young as six. The Food and Drug Administration will now vote on whether to accept the proposals. COVID-19 isn't the only health threat coming out of the past two years. Drug overdoses rose significantly during the pandemic. That's according to the nonprofit Fair Health, who analyzed millions of medical claims. At the same time, however, fewer people were actually diagnosed with substance use disorder. Fair Health says alcohol accounted for 52% of cases last year, and opioids came second with 21%. But data from the CDC estimates nearly 109,000 people had a fatal drug overdose in 2021. That's a 51 percent hike from 2019. A spacecraft was expected to collide with an asteroid's moon today. And that's exactly how NASA planned it. Coming up, the Arizona connection to a space mission that sounds like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. Hurricane Ian is making its way up towards the Gulf of Mexico into the Florida Peninsula. Next, I'll let you know when we could see it make landfall in the Florida Panhandle and what the weather will look like in Arizona in the next coming days on Cronkite News. I do. Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? 
Cronkite Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkite Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Nopales como este van a tumbar Cronkite Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology. Can you tell me what I'm looking at? I'm not looking for love, I'm looking for cookies. And there's still places to discover. It just absorbs you. You can make this at home if you can't find it. I will continue to eat and drink until you get here. Get here fast. Cheers. Oh, look at that. Oh, doesn't that look good? We are going to be eating well. It does work. It does. we got a happy little sky. We're just getting started. A historic NASA mission took place this afternoon, and it's one that sounds more like a movie plot than a science experiment. The agency's plan was to intentionally crash a spacecraft into an asteroid's moon. It was expected to crash just after 4.15 p.m. our time. The goal was to change the motion of a celestial body in outer space, something that has never happened before. The hope is that, if proven successful, NASA could use this technique if an asteroid was ever set to collide with Earth. NAU served as a partner on the project, and Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff used its telescope to track the asteroid. Another NASA mission we've been following has been delayed once again, this time thanks to Mother Nature. Hurricane Ian is forcing NASA to bring the Artemis I rocket back inside. The move will delay the launch by at least a few weeks. This comes after rocket malfunctions postponed the launch in August and again earlier this month. The Artemis I mission is just the start of a program that aims to return people to the moon and eventually land people on Mars. The delayed launch is just one of the ways Hurricane Ian is impacting those in Florida. Evacuation orders have been issued and preparations are underway as Ian approaches. Luke Vickery joins us from the Cronkite News Weather Center with the latest on the storm. Another look at Hurricane Ian as it makes its way into the Gulf of Mexico up towards the Florida Peninsula, where it's probably going to impact towards the middle of the Florida Peninsula and then make its way up towards the Florida Panhandle. We're looking at it about being roughly a Category 3 or higher hurricane, what we call a major hurricane, towards when it makes landfall on the peninsula, but it could weaken as it makes its way higher into the panhandle. As for Arizona's rainfall right now, Tucson seeing a little pop-up shower in the globe area as well, seeing some pop-up showers. Tomorrow night we will see, or excuse me, tonight we will not see really too much rainfall. You wake up tomorrow morning with a dry pavement, but towards the middle of the day tomorrow, we could see a few more pop-up showers in roughly the same areas. Uh, those higher elevation areas have those higher probabilities of seeing those pop-up showers. But we will Tuesday night into early Wednesday, some more moisture as you see this cloud cover moving its way up towards Phoenix. That could mean some chances of rainfall coming in maybe Thursday this week. Um, Phoenix, you see not much rainfall right now, but we could see that potential later this week. As for our temperatures right now, pretty close to 100 degrees at 6 p.m. Luckily. Towards the nightfall, we will get down to the 80s, even the low 80s as our low tomorrow morning. But here's a look at why our temperatures are really so high. That high pressure sitting over us towards Salt Lake City, it's going to shift a little bit east. Then we're going to have this low kind of make its way down towards the Salt Lake City area. That's what's going to help bring some of those lower temperatures in and even small chance of precipitation once we get to the middle of the week. Unfortunately, Tuesday, we're still going to have those high temperatures, especially if you move down to the southwest where Yuma is sitting at 106 degrees. That is very hot. Definitely not sweater weather down there. Breezy conditions on Tuesday and Wednesday along with those high temperatures. But we're going to finish the week strong, particularly the weekend. Very nice temperatures. And we'll finish Tuesday with a high of 98 degrees. In the Cronkite News Weather Center, I'm Luke Vickery. I'm Victoria Samuels. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. The Phoenix Suns start training camp while questions loom about the team. We'll have the details coming up. Okay, let's go right up in here and start having some fun. Such a thrill to be able to do this. Recreation is the gateway drug to conservation. How do you create that perfect straight edge? You can do anything. 
History is today. Chasing the American dream. Experience something personal. A place of imagination. I can go anywhere I want to go. You guys are just going to love it. An entertainment experience unlike anything. There's something for everyone with Passport on the PBS Video app. On Masterpiece Mystery. Evil can find its roots so easily in an English village. The landscape of criminal investigation. Murder, almost certainly. Modern policing methods. We endeavor to do our best. We're working hard to solve this case. And to make sure justice gets done. It's a new adventure. And the rest, as they say, is mystery. I can hardly wait. Art was one of the powers that made life life. I think we all believed that. I'm a kicked out every single door. I'm a show you never ever seen before. So control you, I'm a show you. This is a real life story of a real life person. This was my only connection to my culture. Look at me now. Fight the power. Look at me now. Look at me now. Our stories deserve to be heard. You're passionate and you respect your heritage. That is a perfect recipe. Now is the time for the reformation. Now is the time to rebuild the nation. That's amazing. You're making me cry. <laughs> Some girls can go out there and just steal a spotlight. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. Everyone has something to contribute to humanity. And the arts are the thing that does that. I couldn't have said it better myself. Welcome back to the Cronkite Sports Report. I'm Victoria Samuels. The Suns opened training camp this morning with their annual media day. While it's usually a day of optimism, the upcoming season, the Suns were dealing with the black cloud left by the suspension of owner Robert Sarver. Cronkite News reporter Liam Archer has reaction from the team. It was a somber media day for the Phoenix Suns, who spent most of the morning responding to the suspension of owner Robert Sarver. Suns general manager James Jones expressed disbelief in the findings of the 10-month-long investigation into racist and sexist behavior. The state of shock, personally, you just don't want to see those types of findings, that's, that's, you don't want that to be the narrative around your organization. The investigation inside Robert Sarver's workplace misconduct found that over his tenure as team owner, Robert Sarver engaged in racist and misogynistic dialogue. The report also indicated that Sarver used the N-word at least five times, even after being told to stop by colleagues. When I, I saw the report, I was not happy about it, quite frankly disgusted. Um, it's not a word you repeat. Players echoed the disappointment, saying the investigation's findings came as a shock as they read the entire report. It's not the Robert Sarver that welcomed me to Phoenix with open arms, um, but at the same time, I'm not, you know, insensitive to everybody that's involved in the situation. I read it, uh, I read all of it, the full report, and like I said, I was, uh, um, I was, I was bothered by it, but now we got to move on. Sarver announced on September 21st that he would begin the process of selling the franchise as the team tries to get ready for the upcoming season. In Phoenix, Liam Archer, Cronkite News. The Suns will begin training camp with a full team meeting tonight as they look to shift their focus back to the basketball court. And speaking of on the court business, the Suns also have some roster questions to answer. While all of their big names were on hand today, there was one significant player missing. Cronkite News reporter Michael Donahue tells us who won't be around for much longer. On Sunday, the Suns and Jay Crowder mutually agreed for Crowder not to attend media day as the Suns looked to trade the 11-year veteran. Members of the Suns emphasize that there's no hard feelings towards Crowder and this decision will ultimately be the best for the team. This is an ongoing conversation and after very fruitful and, and, and deliberate uh, conversations, we just decided it was best that he wasn't with us for training camp. Um, what that means going forward, um, I don't know. We don't know. These things happen, you know, and you have to transition and move forward. Um, I totally uh, am behind James and how we are handling this. And again, all the stuff that went on behind the scenes will remain private. What I know is that everybody has to do what's best for them, and I'm always going to support 
any one of my teammates, especially somebody like Jay, who uh, is a huge reason why we were even successful the past few years. So. Jones says he'll keep conversations on Crowder private at the moment and did not specify who or what the Suns would want in return for him. Crowder took to Twitter on Sunday for his feelings on the situation, saying, quote, one must find work where he is needed. In Phoenix, Michael Donahue, Cronkite News. Once traded, Crowder will be playing for his eighth team in the league. Saturday night, the ASU football team hosted the 13th ranked Utah Utes, and the game marked the debut of Sean Aguano as the Sun Devils interim head coach, replacing Herm Edwards. There may have been a new coach, but the results were still the same. Aguano watched the Sun Devils struggle as Utah had their way dominating ASU 34-13, dropping Arizona State to 1-3 on the season. After the game, Aguano was trying to deliver a positive message as his team pushes forward. My heart, and I told them at halftime and then I told them at the game, there will be no quit from me and there will be no quit from our staff. I mean, nothing will be changed in a game or in one week, you know, um, but I, I do think the changes that Coach Aguano made um, will be, I mean, very good for our team for the rest of this season. I, I feel like we'll definitely improve. It's a long way from their days together on the Arizona Cardinals, but Ken Harvey and John Booty are still playing the game they love, even though it's with a decidedly different kind of athlete, as Haley Smiler reports from our Washington Bureau. The 13th annual congressional football game pitted Capitol Police officers, the guards, against members of Congress who call themselves the Mean Machine. Ken Harvey and John Booty say coaching lawmakers has some similarities to any other team and some differences. It's like a real team. You got you got some players that are gung-ho and give 100%. You got some you got to teach. You got some you can pat on the back, some you got to kind of shake a little bit. But, you know, you know, it's amazing. They love to talk. I get out on our little power trip, my power trip. I get to make them do uh, push-ups. And so it's like, yeah, I'm in control. Coaching the Mean Machine is just the latest twist in a history for the two former players that goes back to growing up in Texas. From Texas. We went to a junior college. We didn't go to the same junior college. We were in the NFL draft together, at the NFL combine together. Then in 1993, I became a... Arizona, Phoenix Cardinal then, uh, we played one year at the Cardinals. And that was the 1993 season, when the Cardinals went 7-9. and nine. Harvey says that playing together bonded the two and let them build a brotherly relationship. Those bonds were renewed in 2004, when the two were in Washington and were approached about coaching the Mean Machine, with Booty focusing on the offense and Harvey on the defense. You get those bonds from playing football, we played together with the Cardinals, mm -hmm. and so when we, saw, when we saw each other a long time ago, we are like, you know, we're boys, we're, yeah. we're, we're together. The two have coached the congressional team every year since. They admit it's less competitive than they're used to in the pros, and the level of play isn't as high. But win or lose, for everyone involved in the game, it's all about the charities the game raises money for, and using the platform that the lawmakers and former pros have to help out the community. To be able to raise over $400,000 for local D.C. charities because of a bunch of old guys playing some very healthy cops in a football game, that makes me proud. Proud, but not victorious. The guards beat the Mean Machine 19-8 at last week's game, the 12th time in the 13 years that the game's been played that the guards have won. But Booty and Harvey said they'll be back next year looking for that coveted second win. In Washington, Haley Swilo, Cronkite News. That's it for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Sydney. We're learning more about Super Bowl 57 coming to Glendale this February including who will headline the halftime show. Details coming up after the break. I do. Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? Cronkai Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkai Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Nopales como este. Van a tumbar. Cronkai Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology.
closely. Can you tell me what I'm looking at? I'm not looking for love, I'm looking for cookies. And there's still places to discover. It just absorbs you. You can make this at home if you can't find it. I will continue to eat and drink until you get here. Get here fast. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, look at that. Oh, doesn't that look good? We are going to be eating well. It does work. It does. We got a happy little sky. We're just getting started. Last week, Apple Music was announced as the new sponsor of the Super Bowl halftime show. And over the weekend, they announced that Rihanna will be the 2023 headliner. Rihanna confirmed her involvement in Super Bowl 57 with a tweet of a picture showing her hand holding an NFL football. Apple Music also announced that Sean Jay-Z Carter of Rock Nation will serve as the executive producer for the show. Super Bowl 57 will be on February 12th in Glendale, Arizona. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.